Yeah, I won't need that, right? <laughs> so let's just get this in the, out in the open. I don't know who I ticked off that I follow the guy from Harvard, the child genius, and an Olympic gold medalist <laughs> this morning, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I got none of that, OK? What I do have is a very real understanding about revolutions. And what we're going to talk about this morning is the revolution in higher education. All right, so I am already messed up. All right, here we go. So as I said, I'm the president of Paul Quinn College. And Paul Quinn College, about nine years ago, wasn't a very good school. In fact, one might argue we were one of the worst schools in America, and that isn't a joke, right? By every measure, we were bad. And when you are that bad, there's a couple things you can do. You can either say, I suck and I'm going home, or you can realize that you are unencumbered by a history of success, so you can do whatever the hell you want to do, <laughs> right? So, so it was great. So, you know, just to give you some other context, I got this job, and I didn't even apply for the job, OK? <laughs> When people call you up and offer you a job that you didn't apply for, you have one or two choices. You can either sit there and be like, I am just that good, right? Or you can think, maybe no one else wanted this job, <laughs> right? <laughs> no one else wanted this job, all right? So everything was broken, and we took that as an opportunity to completely change the game. So let me tell you about my students now. Now, the average incoming GPA for our students is a 2.7. Our average test scores are 17 on the ACT and 1132 on the SAT. Now, this is, looks like a pretty bright and college-going crowd. That means you are not college-ready by all indicators. All right, but that doesn't mean that you give up on them. It doesn't mean they can't learn. So the other thing you need to know about my students is that 80 to 85% of them are Pell Grant eligible. If you're a Pell Grant eligible, that means that your family has a dysfunctional relationship with wealth and with work. All right, it just does. You don't have a lot of money. You haven't had the opportunities. So data would tell us that if you have that group for a student body, that you're going to fail. Not in the least little bit. One other thing you need to know about the community in which we serve, surrounding Paul Quinn College, and I put this little formula up here, because after all, I am an educator. I like my numbers. 97%, that's how many people are minorities in the neighborhoods surrounding the college. 84% of those people have high school degrees or less. 50% are not in the workforce. Now that could mean that they are unemployed or they just have given up. And 49% of the people in the neighborhoods surrounding our college have earned incomes of less than $30,000. That's our neighborhood. Now we thought we were by ourselves, Turns out we have lots of company in that. There are 1,153 urban colleges in America. U.S. inner cities make up 19% of all Americans and 31% of all minorities who are in poverty. And nearly 60% of the students going to college at first years are not college ready. So that means there are more people and more schools that look like Paul Quinn than there are that anyone might possibly imagine. So we started thinking about this. What can we do? How do we fix this problem? And we came up with something called the new urban college model. And the new urban college model's foundational principles are simple. First of all, we believe in experiential learning. We think we can teach anyone anything if we take the lessons from their community, from their personal experiences, and make it relevant. I mean, there's a reason why she was bored. Because the teachers were boring. The material was boring. She wanted to learn something that was relevant to her, so she went out and created her own curriculum. By the way, I have a faculty job for you. Just, OK? Forget about college, right? You need to come. We'll talk, OK? And so my point is, you have to make it relevant. You have to engage people, right? That is critically important. Secondly, we believe in this concept called we over me. That's our institutional ethos. The needs of the community supersede the wants of the individual. Let me tell you what that looks like. We're in Texas. In Texas, people hold back their first graders for spring football, OK? It's ridiculous. 
we cut the football program and turned our football field into a farm. And it's an organic farm, because you know I'm out here in California. Let me get that in, right? <laughs> we did that because we were in a food desert. The neighborhood surrounding our school, I mean, listen, we're a mile and a half from the garbage dump and three miles from a grocery store. Think about what that says to a community, the way people value you, and then think about what it says that for 30 years, no one gave a damn enough to help you do something about it. So are we going to play football or are we going to feed people? We over me, the needs of the community supersede the wants of the individual. Higher education institutions need to turn themselves from gazing inward and talking about things that only they care about into dealing with the issues that are relevant to the communities they serve. Face outward and engage. We believe in that. Now, the next thing is debt is bad. Okay, say it with me, debt. Okay. This side of the room is wealthy. Say it over here. <laughs> Debt is bad. Debt is bad. You want to back in? Oh, yeah. Debt is bad. Debt is bad. All right. Now, if you have a student body that is 80 to 85 percent Pell Grant eligible, they don't have a lot of resources. I don't know how other college presidents can live with their students coming to them year after year, semester after semester and brokenhearted because they can't afford to stay in school. You have to do something about that. So we created a system that allowed us to do it, and here's what it looks like. First of all, everyone works, okay? Secondly, we reduce tuition and fees, and next up, free textbooks. Everyone works. We're the first urban work college in the country, all right? All our students work between 10 to 20 hours per week in jobs on campus or off campus. Now, you may say, wow, that's a lot. Look, the overwhelming majority of students right now in college are working more than 20 hours a week. So they're already working. All we did was lift the shroud. And instead of having you work the midnight shift at 7-Eleven or at some other place, not that the midnight shift at 7-Eleven is bad because obviously I have eaten a few midnight shifts myself, okay? The point is, Let's stop pretending they aren't working. And let's use that to help advance the students' success possibilities. So in your first two years of college, you are working on campus. Your last two years of college, you're working off campus in jobs related to the career interests you have. We're giving you a two-year head start on getting into your profession. We don't talk about where our students are going to work. We know where they're going to work because they're already working. All right, that's important. Meet the students where they are and lift them to where they need to be. Next up, we reduced the tuition and fees. We were only charging all in $23,875, but it was too much. Our students couldn't afford it, so we scrapped that, right? We now charge all in, no hidden fees. It's, it's not like buying a car, okay? $14,300. That's what it costs, and this is how our students pay for it. Tuition is tied to the Pell Grant amount, $5,800. Right, and look, and I know it's $5,775 but the math is easier with round numbers, okay? So, $5,800 tuition, that's it. $5,000 is a work credit, so you're working 10 to 20 hours per week. That money comes back to you to help pay for tuition so they don't have to borrow it. That's $10,800 of the $14,300. The next $1,200 comes from either federal grants, state grants, or tuition benefits and tuition aid that we give students, right? Now we're down to $2,300 to go to college a year. That's it. So if you're borrowing money, that's all you're borrowing. Now we have a summer bridge program which allows our students to come in early and get nine academic hours. If you get the nine academic hours, you need to average 15 hours a semester to graduate on time. So what we've done is created a scenario where you pick up six hours over six or seven semesters and you graduate a semester early, reducing your debt anymore. You can graduate with $8,000. Now, people say, how can you only charge that much? Well, first of all, do you really need climbing walls? Right? I mean, how about we spend money on the things that the students need? All right, we sat down with our students and said, look, we can get this down, but you've got to be partners in this. And that's the other step. Treat the students as equals, and maybe they won't be so angry at you. Right? Radical concepts. 
okay, radical concepts. But this is important because they deserve better than to spend a life of debt. Speaking of debt, textbooks. Listen, I've got lots of degrees, and I was angry every time I had to buy textbooks. All right, I mean, and the legal profession was the worst. Law school, they sold you these books, you paid like $1,000 for them, and then they were like, but we'll buy it back from you for $400. Just because I didn't go to business school doesn't mean I'm stupid, <laughs> right? So our students weren't buying books, and they weren't buying books not because they didn't want to learn, but because they were using that extra money to help feed themselves and take care of their families. So you've got to understand that. You have to accept it, and then you have to do something about it. There are all of these amazing educational learning devices through open source. So we challenged the faculty. We said, look, you can use textbooks, but you've got to pay for them. <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> right? It was like, well, maybe we don't need textbooks, right? So we found materials that allowed us to communicate learning effectively at a rate that the students could access, right? Made an enormous difference and helps hold down costs. Next up, let me tell you about the pros and cons of this system, right? Because we're transparent. The pros are you'll see an increase in enrollment. Our enrollment jumped 55% this fall, right? We had a waiting list for the first time in 143 years, right? No, that deserves a hand, right? The funny part was that we announced this in February, thinking it would give us a year to plan ahead, that we were going to be prepared. We have, no, 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 no. It was Katie bar the door. OK, we made the announcement. Students started getting their financial aid packages, and all of a sudden, everyone wanted to come. It was a great problem to have, except when you got to the dormitory. But that's a different speech for a different time, right? But my point is, people are paying attention to cause. We need to respond to that, right? It's critically important. Your expanded footprint. When you send your students out to work, they are ambassadors for your institution. So now we are in places that we were never in before. Companies are excited to see us and to have our students, and that's a great benefit to us. It's a fundraising boom, because people like schools that respond to the realities of lives. They're betting on institutions that are capable of evolving and addressing the issues that matter. That's important. Next up, student readiness. Our students are prepared to get jobs. If you're coming from under-resourced communities, you don't have parents who are telling you, go get internships, right? They don't, they, they don't have access to those things. My parents were able to call up friends, get me jobs, just the same way that all my friends got their summer jobs. I was able to go to Washington in college and work for free, one of the most important jobs I had, but that was because my parents had the ability to do that. We've got to even that for those students who don't have that, create a level playing field. Now, because we're being transparent, let's talk about the cons. First of all, no one is at home dreaming about working when they come to college, right? They want to party. They want to hang out. They want to go drinking with their friends. Uh, I'm sorry, we're a faith-based school, so no one drinks. <laughs> All right. Now, the point is, you've got to retrain people. You've got to retrain your faculty, your staff. You have to get them engaged in the business of teaching students 24 hours a day, not just when they're in the classroom. So that's tough. Next up, change. Look. Change is scary to people. What we're talking about is blowing up a whole system. There's nobody that when they were getting their doctorate was like, yeah, I majored in blowing up the whole system. Right? That's not how it works. So you've got to help people become comfortable with change by letting them know that it is inevitable. Evolve or perish, and we have no desire to perish. Startup capital. You do have to have the money to start the program until it takes root. But you can achieve that by reprioritizing things in your budget. right? We are down to under $2.5 million of debt at our school, right? We've had seven, eight consecutive unqualified audits and average surpluses of $1.8 million a year for the last three years. And we are a small school with a $5 million endowment. So if we can do it, anyone can do it. But here's the bright side. If you do it, if you make these changes, you will have students that look like mine. Do you see how happy they are, <laughs> right? Because they're graduating with no debt, Life is good. They're going to have employment. People like them. They like themselves. It's great. 
So I will leave you with this. We can do more than we have ever thought about doing, but we have to be able to do it differently. If you are interested in doing it differently, the world is open to you and the possibilities are endless. If you are not, I want to thank you because I will get all the students you would have gotten. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>